everyone and welcome back to the channel. I'm Pei and today we will be discussing a short story that covers the universe, all of its possibilities including those imagined and uh, as of yet to be imagined. So nothing too deep. Now as you already know, judging by the title of the video, I am talking about Jorge Luis Borges, The Library of Babel. A short story published in its original Spanish in 1941 and in English in 1962. This story tells of the universe represented metaphorically as a library, and within this library contains every book written, every book that could possibly be written, and that does not just contain itself to books that have recognizable meaning and purpose, but every book that could be put together using orthographical symbols in which there would be 25. 22 characters, a period, a comma, and space. Every book containing 410 pages in a particular format. Now, this story may sound like it has the potential to become very complicated very quickly, and it most certainly does. But don't worry, because if this story does sound like a complete headache that just falls into a labyrinth of confusion, I wouldn't worry too much, as that just means that you're following along thus far. Now there are a few videos that have been made on this story already, as there are as many takes on this as there are books in the library. So I will uh, provide links to those videos below. So here I'll just give a uh, quick summary of the story and then proceed with the analysis. The story only being a few pages is somewhat deceptive, as it is by no means a quick read. And as stated, anyone familiar with Borges' work, this really shouldn't be uh, much of a surprise. We begin begin with the narrator giving a description of the library, one which they immediately point out is the universe, which is made up of indefinite, possibly infinite, hexagonal galleries. On one of the walls there is an entrance, and on the other, necessities for human survival. These galleries of hexagons seem to be attached, and as many have pointed out in other videos, uh, kind of like a beehive. However, if one looks at the description, that, that can't possibly be right. By the way the story describes these hexagons, there really can only be four. Anything more would suggest a, uh, another entrance, and unless they're all stacked up upon one another, which is discounted as it's described as a hallway that uh, connects them, I don't see how this description of a beehive is, is actually possible. And with Borges being as uh, meticulous with his uh, writing, I can't see how this would be a mistake or something simply overlooked. Okay, so I had to look this up to see how this would work, or if it does work. As the story does say, there is an indefinite number of hexagons, each one having a single entrance. And as it turns out, the, this has been pointed out many, many times. And I did find a uh, website in which tries to explain this, except it does involve a, 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 a rewrite, which uh, then states that there is a second entrance. I'll provide the link below, and if anyone else knows of an explanation, let me know. But this page here is the best that uh, I could find. Alright, well, that answers, that answers that. Anyway. The remaining walls are bookshelves, and as mentioned, uh, they contain books that uh, hold 410 pages. The content of these books is allegedly meaningless for the most part. With 22 characters, a comma, and a period, every possible arrangement that can be made of these symbols is what is found in these books. This makes the number of books adding up to 25 raised to the power of 1,312,000. To put this in perspective, for each book in the library, there is 30 million others that differ from a single character. This, of course, is what makes it slightly difficult to find any book that provides substantial amount of meaning or purpose outside filling a spot. And by slightly difficult, I, I, I mean impossible. The likelihood of anyone coming across a novel of any kind is uh, zero. 
which may not immediately sound right, since books that hold coherent meaning do exist, and therefore the possibility of finding one couldn't be zero. But no, it's, it's zero. But we'll get, we'll get to that later, possibly in, in, in another video. Now, the idea of a total library is by no means a new concept, and one that Borges traces the history of in his short essay, The Total Library, which I will provide a link for the PDF below if you want to quickly read that. In Borges' version, we have the narrator who realizes he's coming uh, uh, upon his last days. And in doing so, he gives an account of his experiences within the library while giving descriptions of others' reactions in such a universe. For example, the librarians that search for treasured books that provide meaning, as well as those who would destroy books, uh, declaring them meaningless. What's interesting here is the people that are throwing the books out, the ones that they have declared have no meaning whatsoever, would first have to have had knowledge of any future future language or any evolving language to actually know that these books have no meaning. Though the story vaguely mentions how uh, uh, decoding a specific book led to understanding the fundamental law of the library, that being the books are made up of the same elements, the comma, period, and letters, and with that information gathered, they concluded that there could be no, no uh, two similar books. But, but we'll, we'll, we'll come back to this. To sum up the story in a sentence or two, the universe is a vast library that contains every possibly written book, and a man who knows he's about to die is just kind of letting you know that's, that's, that's what it is. Which is kind of strange, because who would he be saying this to? Everyone would not only already know this, but know it very well. It is quite literally what surrounds them everywhere. It's, 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 it's equivalent to listening to someone on their deathbed tell you how uh, space exists. What is probably the most obvious analysis of the short story is its representation of uh, the human being's futile search for meaning in the universe. It would be all too easy to compare this to the absurdist interpretation, and many questions would arise, such as if we were to find a book that did communicate a supposed meaning, would we recognize it without having anything uh, to compare it to? Or better yet, if we were to come across, say, the theory of relativity, in its uh, completion, since the letters that formulate the book were randomly generated, would it still hold the same meaning? If you say yes, then the theory of relativity in written format would have had to have been understood before discovering the book, at least to a degree in which one could make sense of it. If it wasn't, then upon finding it, it would look just like all the other nonsensical books that came before it. Because of this, it is not enough for someone to just find a book that can be read in an understandable manner, at least for uh, many books uh, dealing with the sciences. It also has to be the right person, one that can understand what it is that's being communicated. And not only for the sciences, but would we recognize something like Macbeth, since uh, language has evolved? We would assume words like twer, for instance, uh, would throw everything off simply because we no longer speak like this. We would have to know quite a bit beforehand just to find anything. But questions like this arise with every thought experiment as that is what they are good for in a good work of fiction. What Borges presents us with is an examination of the nature of reality, and asks what exactly are the epistemological boundaries to knowing what is contained in our universe. But more specifically, what is the degree of validation that human beings can hold in deciphering the world around them given the limits of reason and empirical investigation? The story depicts many groups of people with separate ideas and theories, such as 
as the idealists and the mystics, but there's an interesting point in the story in which one theory is accepted as fact, despite its impossibility of it being one. As what was stated earlier, along with the fundamental law of the library, with all the information gathered, they were able to conclude that there were no two identical books. The point in which this is stated in the story, I, I think, may be a bit more important than it just being something one has to accept for any of it to make sense. And this may be the exact point that Borges is trying to make. He puts this right after stating the theories held by the idealists and the mystics. The idea that there are no two books alike is a theory based on empirical findings that amount to nothing in comparison to the number of books there are in the library. And yet, this idea is taken as fact simply because they all accepted it as fact. The fact is, they would never find two identical books even if there were identical books. But there can't be two identical books because of the premise where it states it to be incontrovertible. It simply can't be denied. But why all the books being made up of the same elements does not necessitate a limitation. It is simply a truth because of the acceptance of the premise. But the premise is there because of the acceptance of the truth. I'm currently reading uh, the book The Conflict of Mind, Major Epistemological Problems by O.G. Rose. And there's a quote in this book that perfectly sums up this problem. I can be certain that something is true, but it doesn't follow that I am necessarily certain about only true things. It is possible for me to be certain about something that is false. Furthermore, it does not follow that everything that is true is something I will be certain about, nor that what is false is that which I can't be certain about. The inhabitants of the library may very well be certain that there are no two books alike, but this cannot stand as absolute truth unless every book has been examined. They can only be as certain as possible with the fundamental law of the library, as ancient cultures were as certain as a flat earth cosmography. The certainty comes from a place of not knowing otherwise. However, Borges, in a very clever way, may have given an answer on why this premise was so easily accepted in the following paragraph, where he addresses something that speaks directly to a complication within the way a truth develops. He states, When it was proclaimed that the library contained all books, the first impression was one of extravagant happiness. All men felt themselves to be the masters of an intact and secret treasure. The universe was justified. The universe suddenly usurped the unlimited dimensions of hope. This quote here, within the context it is presented, alludes to the false consensus effect, also known as consensus bias. People tend to view their own behavioral choices and judgments as accepted and complementary to the surrounding circumstances because they see them as relatively common and appropriate. And the reason this particular fact is so easily accepted in the story is the same reason that we, to this day, may accept things, or at the very least we have throughout history, accepted many things as fact which we would later prove wrong. And that is, as Borges rightly points out, these supposed facts provide justification for the universe. They place our species as masters of not just our present selves, but future selves, providing hope where there actually may not be any. What would happen to the fundamental law of the library if one did come across a book identical to another? But of course this could never happen, as we'll see in the next video. And it's not just highly unlikely, it, it, it is impossible. But let's say they did and continue with this thought. All that empirical evidence added up to nothing in light of what truly is. The truth becomes temporary in every instance. That which is justified true belief is not knowledge. And this goes far beyond having ten coins in your pocket. If, if, anyone, if anyone gets that reference, uh, uh, you win. 
This cuts to the very heart of truth and its relationship with knowledge and questions the grounds of the relationship itself. Without knowing absolutely what is contained in the entirety of the Library of Babel, is it fair or even possible to make absolute claims about the library? Essentially, are all truth claims only temporarily justified knowledge? And of course you couldn't make claims on this statement due to the obvious paradox. The paradox being, there is no truth. Well, now we have a problem. But maybe none of this is the point. Although this is Borges, and this very well could have been the point. But maybe what is said at the very end is what should be taken away. The library is unlimited and circular, and any traveler on a long enough timeline would see to it that the volumes repeat in the same disorder, which then, if repeated, would be in order. Now, next video we'll talk about exactly how many books are in the library, and why this library, despite having a precise number of books within it, still might be infinite. And not in the uh, circular way in which Borges uh, expresses in the story, but the library itself actually still may have to be infinite.